sort of primordial soup existing on Earth. And lightning is added to all of the chemicals, um, all of the elements that are in this primordial soup. And from that, amino acids form. And um, they, they clump together to form these coacervates, which eventually evolve into cells, which is what gives us life. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so coacervates aren't actually cells. They aren't actually alive. They're just precursors. So how in the world do we go from coacervates to actually true cells? Cells that are part of a living organism. Well, the first cells um, were prokaryotic, which means that they lacked a nucleus. They were anaerobic, which means that they were able to survive without oxygen. And they were heterotropes um, that resemble types of bacteria that are alive today. Um, heterotrope is anything that has to consume something else in order to get its energy. So you and I, we are both heterotropes because we have to eat something else in order to get our energy. We can't make our own food like plants can. We don't photosynthesize um, as convenient as that would be. So um, it's possible that these amino acids come together, they form coacervates, and then through a lot of different other steps, we end up with the first true cells. Um, but they were very simple. Um, they had RNA and not DNA as their genetic material. RNA um, is still present in our cells, and in fact, it's very, very important for the production of proteins. Um, but DNA is a more complex molecule than RNA is. So this is an idea of um, what a prokaryotic cell looks like. Uh, because there is no nucleus, the, um, in this case, DNA is just kind of floating around in the cytoplasm of the cell. Um, the cytoplasm is the fluid. Um, there's ribosomes, some cell membranes, some cell walls. So there's some of the basic parts of a cell, but it's a very uh, simple cell. Um, and this is um, looking at bacteria under um, an electron scanning microscope. They're very, very tiny microscopic organisms. So next on the stage is photosynthesis. Um, early heterotrophs fed on organic molecules um, until that supply of organic molecules to live, uh, diminished. So uh, these early primitive cells um, had to consume something else in order to get the energy they needed. Um, natural selection was favoring organisms that could harness energy from an outside source and use it as food. So we have these cells and they are making their own food, but through the course of evolution, some of those cells start to be able to make their own food through photosynthesis, which is a very efficient way of obtaining energy. So as the food source began to run out for these heterotropes, evolution was favoring these cells that could make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Um, so at some point a primitive form of photosynthesis began to evolve um, but instead of uh, using water for photosynthesis um, these primitive cells were using hydrogen sulfide um, and that process is actually known as chemiosynthesis and it happens to this day at those deep sea floor vents that I was talking about earlier where we see some of the same conditions of early Earth. So the first autotropes were commonplace by about 3.4 billion years ago. Um, and they grew in layered formations that look like this. Um, and they're called stromatolites. So they were making their own food by photosynthesizing hydrogen sulfide, which was abundant in the atmosphere and uh, the oceans of early Earth. Um, and they were growing in these layers known as stromatolites. And we still find stromatolites in Australia. So although these look like rocks, they're actually um, living cells that are cemented together. So this is all still very primitive. We're talking about single-celled organisms. Um, and the cells are very primitive. They lack a nucleus. And how do we go from that to modern um, humans that have eukaryotic cells. Well, let's talk a little bit more about oxygen in life.
So modern、um, photosynthesis using water started to evolve about 2.2 billion years ago. So cells stopped using、um, hydrogen sulfide for photosynthesis about 2.2 billion years ago. Um, oxygen was released into the atmosphere as a waste product of photosynthesis. So,、um, photosynthesis、um, is producing water and oxygen as waste products. That release of oxygen began to change the composition of Earth's atmosphere. However, oxygen was actually poisonous to early anaerobic organisms, and most of them died off. This completely transformed Earth. Earth went from、um, having primitive prokaryotic organisms that were、um, synthesizing hydrogen sulfide to、um, organisms that were. Uh, photosynthesizing and creating oxygen, and what this did is it、um, caused anaerobic organisms to die out. Anaerobic being organisms that、um, uh, do not live on oxygen. Oxygen is poisonous to them, and as they began to die out, this made room for the evolution of more organisms that required oxygen. So this is an example of、um, bacteria. So anaerobic bacteria, such as these, now live only deep within the ocean, in mud, and in other places where the Earth's atmosphere cannot reach, because the Earth's atmosphere is abundant with oxygen thanks to photosynthesis.、Um, so anaerobic organisms do still exist,、um, but their presence is limited to any area that's not exposed to the atmosphere. So organisms using oxygen began to evolve and dominate planet Earth.、Um, and this is、um, just a fossil of one of the early anaerobic organisms. All right. So the road to modern organisms. We're making quite a leap here from Miller and Urey's experiment, which is showing the creation of、uh, complex molecules that can then、um, possibly gather together and. Form、um, the first precursors to living cells.、Uh, the first living cells being very primitive, prokaryotic, lacking a nucleus,、um, and are heterotrophic, so they need to consume something as that food begins to run out.、Uh, evolution is favoring organisms that can make their own food, which are known as autotrophs. These autotrophs are originally um, using um, hydrogen sulfide or photosynthesizing hydrogen sulfide,、um, but through the course of evolution,、um, they begin to、um, photosynthesize、uh, using water. Oxygen becomes a waste product as oxygen becomes more abundant. The anaerobic organisms die out, and organisms that thrive on organ on oxygen began to dominate Earth. After billions of of years of evolution, eukaryotes and、um, complex cells become more of the norm on planet Earth. So eukaryotic organisms are organisms that have a true nucleus. They have DNA instead of RNA, and they also have membrane-bound organelles inside of the cell.、Um, eukaryotic organisms began to evolve about 1.4 and 1.6 billion years ago. So we're really starting to see、um, more complexion in evolution. Um, eukaryotic ancestors probably ingested bacteria、um, that performed specific functions, which later became mitochondria and chloroplasts. Mitochondria and chloroplasts are、um, the powerhouses of the cell. They're where all of the energy that a cell needs are made. Mitochondria are for animal cells, chloroplasts are for plant cells.、Um, and this theory is known as the、um, endosymbiosis theory, endosymbiosis theory, which is The idea that、um, mitochondria and chloroplasts were probably their own cells at one time, but、um, they were, through the course of evolution, engulfed into another cell, and they were able to provide energy for that cell.、Um, so it became a, a symbiotic relationship. The mitochondria had protection from the cell, and the cell had energy from mitochondria. So it was sort of a match made in heaven, and the two, to this day,、um, continue to coexist. Um, so here is、um, 
eukaryotic cells and as you can see there looks like an egg um, with a yolk in the middle and that yolk is actually the nucleus which houses the DNA and you can see all the different parts of a eukaryotic cell and how much more complex it is than a prokaryotic it's got all these um, membranes in the middle like mitochondria and lysosomes um, endoplasmic reticulum all of these um, different organelles which help the cell to function. Sexual reproduction and multicellular life um, also helped evolution, the evolution of complex organisms to really take off. Um, the origin of sexual reproduction it rapidly increased the rate of evolution because what it did is it allowed organisms to combine their genes and the genes creating the best physical traits um, allowed the um, organism to be best suited for its environment and to be able to thrive and continue to reproduce and pass on those uh, those genes. So genes and traits began shuffling and combining in ways that were never possible before. So we start to see um, evolution really take off and new organisms are beginning to evolve and um, take up different niches in earth and different environments that they are best suited to. So genetic variation um, created new species under the influence of natural selection. Um, natural selection being that um, genes are creating physical traits that help an organism to be um, best adapted to its environment so it can survive in the environment long enough to reproduce and pass on those genes. Um, if genes are creating physical traits that don't allow an organism to be well suited, that organism will die out before it can reproduce and that is natural selection. Um, so for instance we start to see flamingos and um, more complex forms of plants and more complex uh, forms of animals as well. Um, so this is um, a quick and dirty overview of the origins of life here on planet Earth.